Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called reality. And I know that's a really silly sentence to have to actually say. Yeah, we're, we're in reality, but we're also checking out a game called reality. And it happens to be a puzzle slash adventure game emphasis on the puzzle element. Uh, with some very ethereal, dreamlike qualities to it, and one that I just thought I should share. Uh, I did do a very quick run through. This is a super short game, probably like five or ten minutes long. Uh, but since it's a puzzle game, of course, I did like to uh, sort of get my mind around what I might have to do here, so that way we can actually successfully accomplish it without uh, running into some sort of a dead end or stumbling block or something like that. Uh, so anyway, we play as this uh, little boy, I believe he's a boy, who is in a room, and uh, all we really have to interact with the world is just ourselves and our wits, and there's really not a whole lot to do in the room uh, other than jump around and experience the lovely lighting effects and very uh, calming, soothing music that's playing. Uh, very uh, warm, welcoming soundtrack that we have to look at here, or listen to rather here. Uh, but yeah, the, the color scheme here, the, uh, the visuals definitely complement that feeling. Everything has this very uh, just happy, tranquil feeling to it. Everything's very soothing. Uh, so we've got a computer desk with a little glowing computer monitor on it. Outside, we can see there's some bright lights, but we seem to be trapped in this room, and we don't really have a way out as far as we can tell. So we look around, and I have to say, it took me like, I don't know, ten trips around the room for me to finally realize that I could actually go out of this part of the room. Uh, it's not, for some reason, apparent to me, even though, yeah, you can clearly see there's this like little uh, area right here where you can run into... Uh, but for some reason it was like an optical illusion to me and I didn't understand that you could jump up it. Anyway, I was thinking you probably had to go down like and sleep in bed, maybe you would be like freed from your prison. I don't know, I was going way too esoteric and uh, artistic on it. I suppose we're just going to literally walk out of the room, so let's do that. And we are transported to a hallway of sorts. And as we walk through the hallway, we'll notice we've got now a strobing light. Uh, which I thought at first was a window. I thought we were walking through some sort of like a skyway uh, passage of some sort, and it just appears that this uh, light is going to keep strobing to uh, red, green, and blue, which I believe are our hints. Now, the thing about this game is, yes, it is a puzzle game, uh, but it's fairly esoteric in how you solve the puzzles. They're not exactly the type of puzzles that you would see like clues to and put two and two together. They're just sort of like you have to come up with your own methodologies for why you would solve them, and I think in retrospect, solving each one of the puzzles makes more sense after you've solved it, if that makes any sense. Uh, not always the type of puzzles that I'm a huge fan of, but I do get that there is some uh, enjoyment to be gleaned from the idea of, of learning things as you go and coming up with your own sort of arbitrary set of rules. Uh, you know, it lets you make puzzles that are not really constrained by any sort of logical boundaries, and in that case, uh, when we're dealing with a game that seems to deal with a lot of dreamlike tendencies and qualities, I think that actually does make some sense. Uh, anyway, uh, by the way, this is uh, like a full spoiler run, so if you guys want to play this one yourself, you may want to actually stop the video at this point and uh, just go ahead and jump into the game. It is a free browser game uh, available on Congregate, and of course the link will be right in the description, so before I spoil this puzzle, I'll give you guys a moment if you'd like to hit pause on this video and go, uh, go ahead and do that. I doubt you'll get too stuck. The puzzles are not really that hard, and there's very few of them, uh, but it is... Uh, the potential's there. If you're not the type that's able to think of things in a really abstract way, uh, I could imagine this being slightly frustrating. Uh, so, basically the goal here, uh, as far as I could tell, is we want to just do red, green, and then blue. Uh, you know, RGB. And the only way to switch between these panels seems to be, as far as I can tell, to uh, just jump occasionally, and it seems to like toggle between one and then the other. I don't know, it's kind of, it seems a little arbitrary to me how you would solve it, but at the same time, uh, still kind of cool. I mean, the fact that, it, just the presentation of it is, I think, really what draws me to this, and, uh, the, the fact that there isn't really any, uh, explanation, there's no hand-holding here, this is all up to you to figure out, uh, what it is about this game that is going to bring you forward and push you onward. Uh, so the clue in this one might be that like attracts like. Of course, we are just this little dude here, so we have to be the one to uh, do that attraction. I mean, the, the obvious thing would be to, like, push some of these blocks around, because these are the only things we can interact in the room, right? Uh, we can push these blocks around, we can try to, like, maybe do a little bit of platforming, but then we realize 
Uh, well, not only are the controls a little wonky, because they are, but on top of that, we also can't jump off of anything but the ground, which is actually kind of an important thing to note, because it means we can't really do any platforming challenges. Uh, I did make it up onto that little stump there, but it was only completely by coincidence. Uh, the second thought might be maybe we need to, like, push these up against this edge here, uh, because this looks like the only place that would, like, open up or maybe something would change. Uh, not exactly correct. What we do want to notice is off on the far left corner, uh, this block seems to be glowing quite maniacally, in fact, off in the, uh, the darkness here, glowing with a red glimmer to it, and the only other space other than the blocks that this red glow seems to be coming from is over in the far right corner. Uh, now you would think, well, obviously if there's glow coming out of the ground over there, that there must be some sort of a pit or something that we can fall into. Uh, and you would be close, but at the same time, the game doesn't actually let you fall. Uh, so you sort of have to take it on faith that there is a pit there. Uh, well, at least until you actually produce some evidence that there is such a thing, and the evidence would be uh, to push a block over in that direction. So that is actually what our goal is for this puzzle. Uh, when I said like attracts like, I meant the red glow. Uh, we need to actually you know, be the, the moving force that reunites those two things. Uh, so we just have to figure out a way to get this block around. Lovely dynamic lights, so I really do enjoy the, the glowing effects and all the shadowing on everything. And uh, I do kind of like the sense of character that the actual main, uh, you know, protagonist seems to have. He's just kind of silly. Reminds me a little bit of Minecraft Steve. Oh, well, these blocks, I don't quite understand what their physics are, but they're definitely silly and you can, like, jump up on top of them somehow. Uh, but we're just going to continue to push these blocks little by little over to this corner. Not really sure why that's the solution. I mean, there isn't really a reason thematically why this would be. But it's okay. Like I said a few times, sometimes puzzles, you don't need to think too hard. Uh, this is an abstract dreamlike thing. And it's kind of interesting, though, when you look at a game in that sort of a perspective. Uh, you know, when you're dreaming yourself and you try to put together logic from point A to point B, why did your dream take me here, why did it make me do this, why, you know, it's not really that your dream made you do anything, it's really your own thoughts that made you do that. Uh, so I think there is a little bit of mirroring in that concept from, you know, an actual dream to what you might do in this uh, short little experience. Now I tried to push two blocks at the same time, it didn't quite work out. Uh, there we go. I was also quite tempted to try and get up on this ledge, as if there was something up here, but there isn't really. Uh, there are some funky collision issues, and, you know, I was able to get stuck in the air a few times uh, by doing little various tests with objects and such. It's not a big deal, I didn't actually crash the game or anything or get stuck. Uh, but it is a little bit frustrating at times, just when you're trying to, like, jump around or move in a way, and you don't really understand if the game wants to let you do something, or if it's just a constraint of the engine. Uh, sometimes it's tough to differentiate what's intentional and what isn't when it comes to this one. Uh, not that big of a deal, just because there isn't all that much to it anyway. Uh, so there we go. So we pushed all the blocks in, and we have revealed the next little area to proceed onward to. And I can actually move this big old chunk, which I didn't realize I could do before. I, w I bet if I flip around and mess with it enough, I could probably flip the thing over. The graphical style reminds me a little bit of 3D dot game heroes in a way. Uh, but it's also got a little bit more going on in terms of, uh, you know, art quality to it. Alright, so now this challenge is definitely one of the more interesting ones out of the group here. Uh, so now we've left the constraints of our building, we've freed ourselves, and now what we have is a situation where we seem to be on some sort of a beach uh, with bits and rocks everywhere, some lovely blue uh, skies ahead of us, maybe an ocean and some clouds, but whenever we walk, the sun is going to be trapped in an eternal cycle here. And we're not really sure what to do about it, other than just keep walking and hope that something will change. Uh, but I can safely say that after walking for quite a time, nothing does change unless you actually take action on your own. And what might that action be? Well, the action is to actually let the sun get to a point where you can reach it and jump right into it. So there we go. Like I said, totally spoilerific on this particular run. But that leads us to probably the most interesting of the group here. So now we were presented with some sort of like an almost Katamari-esque little mini-game where we uh, we have to basically collect all the clouds. And how do we collect all the clouds? Well, we just fly into them We're using our arrow keys and not spacebar, because spacebar has no function when we're flying, apparently. Uh, and we'll just try and fly into all the clouds, grab all the pieces just by colliding with them, and they will follow us around in an amorphous blob 
which I find quite pretty to look at, actually. I think there's some serious screensaver potential here as we're dealing with all of these uh, transparent uh, shapes and primitives as they overlap and create this interesting uh, many-layered white approach, or I don't even know what to call it exactly, the opacity situation, maybe. Um, so we're just going to continue to collect clouds, and what do we want to do with all these clouds? Well, for one thing, we can just play with them and have fun with them, because, you know, it's a game. We like to have fun sometimes, and, well, pretty much all the time. And we're just going to keep doing this, but then eventually we'll get so many clouds that the only option left will be to fly into the sun, like Icarus, I suppose. Uh, why do we want to fly into the sun? Well, again, that continues the theme here. Um, I'm sure there is some sort of a pattern unifying all of these little moments from, you know, one to the next, but we may need a little bit more context to be able to actually piece that puzzle together, and I am kind of curious what that might be. Uh, but just as in any dream, you know, from the outward perspective, a lot of times things seem to be uh, a lot more mystifying than they actually are once you have the framework to look at them uh, within, or the dreams within, I mean. Uh, so I think we've gotten most of the clouds. There may be like one or two more left here. This is a big one. I'll just fly through all of that. I might have to go back for another pass. Uh, the clouds do actually kind of get in your way, so it's a little tough to see where they are. But I believe you could probably drop off the clouds one by one uh, if they get too far in your way. It's a little tough to steer your dude around, but not a big deal. Flying is uh, rather momentary. I love the glow coming from the clouds. It's really pretty. So let us fly into the sun. And we have hopefully fed it enough cloud fuel. Have we? Have we not? Oh, yeah, I'm falling. I'm falling. I'm falling and falling and falling. And I believe that is about where the game comes to an end. So, reality. A short game by Juan Afonso. Thank you for playing. So that is really all we've got to look at on this particular little run. It's not uh, the longest game, it's definitely a little bit uh, on the interesting side. There's a little bit of art artistic, uh, uh, interesting, unique manipulation of concepts here, but, you know, I would love to see a little bit more of this, if anything. Um, I was just starting to get the hang of, like, how I needed to contort my brain to be able to get through each one of these little scenarios. You know, the pattern had started to set up enough that I felt like if I was given about five or ten more of those, that things would have started to really pick up. But then again, there's also something to be said for not going too far with a concept and keeping it sort of bite-sized before it runs into, uh, you know, some level of, like, mediocrity or repetition or something. So in that respect, I think the, the levels of uh, how long everything was, I think, felt pretty good to me. Um, but yeah, either way, I would love to see more uh, work by this developer, and it's definitely someone I will be looking forward to seeing more from in the future. Uh, but yeah, there's, I think there's not a whole lot else to say about this. It's a short little experience. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll go check it out yourself. And I just wanted to make you guys aware of a cool developer that we hadn't heard of up until now, or I hadn't heard of anyway. Uh, and I do always like to keep myself appraised of everybody that's out there that I can find that's making cool work. And there are thousands and thousands more of you, and I will be looking uh, as fast as I can. You know, one game a day will be done in uh, 10,000 million years, but... <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a little luck of the draw, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of the times I hit games that are pretty cool, and I think this was definitely one of them. So, I do want to urge you guys, go check it out yourself if you haven't already. Hopefully you may have heeded my warning earlier in the video and hit pause and go solve the game yourself, or solve the puzzles yourself, I should say. Uh, and that way you don't feel bad that I just spoiled the whole thing for you. But even if you didn't, or you weren't going to have the patience to solve it yourself, or you didn't feel like, you know, booting up a game and looking at it, I don't know, whatever. Some people, uh, you don't really feel like playing a game at the time, so you watch the video, that's fine too. Uh, but, you know, I do just want to put that out there, that it's always an option. Uh, check them out yourself. Personally, I always am interested in hearing what your personal perspectives are, so that's how we do that. You know, like an indie game book club, we all will give it a little bit of time and hopefully contribute a little bit of our own opinion. Uh, but that is going to bring us to the end of this episode, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this, uh, this short, what, 10-ish minute one. Um, but as always, I'll give you the super abbreviated plugs today. Indie-impressions.com for more episodes. Facebook.com slash Indie Impressions so you can get daily updates and streaming news. Uh, at Rockley Smile on Twitter for all my updates as far as, you know, personal news, and if you want to get in contact with me, quickest way to do so is the contact form over on Indie-Impressions.com. I do take suggestions, and if you're an indie dev, feel free to contact me in any way, uh, but primarily the email address if you want to send me a build of your game to take a look on the show. Uh, no promises, I still have a huge backlog, but I definitely check out everything that is sent to me. So I do appreciate you guys sticking around, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. I do a new episode every single day. So I'll see you back here 
roughly the same time, but definitely in the same place. So have a lovely night, guys. I will talk to you real soon. Later.